Hello everyone. Now we will start with a new topic as a part of file handling playlist. And our new topic is handling multiple files of AL11 directory. One of the most common requirement of the project and it's high probability that you will get a chance to work in this kind of requirement. And so many people ask about this kind of requirement. Just go for multiple file handling of AL11 directory. So now it's a turn to cover this particular topic. And once that topic will proceed, you will realize it is just like a real project requirement itself. And you will get similar kind of requirement in the project. So firstly, we will understand the meaning of this particular topic. Handling multiple files of AL11 directory. Suppose if I will go to AL11 transaction code. Suppose if I will go to AL11 transaction code. You all know this is the transaction code for SAP directories. Suppose what customer is saying. There is a directory slash slash TMP. Into this particular directory we have multiple files on the daily basis. You just need to process those multiple files and save into a database table. Suppose if I will go for this particular directory. Suppose if I will go for today's date. Suppose if I will put the filter. Today is 16th June. I will go for OK. You can see into this particular directory, we have a employee file. We have a employee file. This is employee file. We have the data. This is employee file. We have the data. We need to process all these multiple files on daily basis. We can have 20 files, 25 files. We can quit. We can have 50 files. So on daily basis, we are getting the files into this particular directory. We need to process all those files and save into a database table. As of now, into this particular playlist, I just showed you how you can read a only one single file from the directory. Now it's a turn that we will pass the directory and whatever the files are there into that particular directory, we will read all those files one by one. We'll simply save that data of all those files into a database table. Plus, we will go for one additional thing also because once a file is processed, there is no need of that file into this particular directory. So we will archive that particular file also. So this particular requirement has two parts. Whatever the files we are getting on daily basis, we'll simply, simply process those files. Once a file is successfully processed, we will archive into a new directory also because there's no need to process that file again. So we'll take a requirement first. What the requirement is, what customer is saying, customer is saying on daily basis, there are files of employees. Suppose customer has suppose 10 locations. Suppose Ahmedabad location, Mumbai location, Chennai location, Bangalore location. So whatever the employees are joining on a daily basis, the file of the same will be into this particular directory. You need to save the data of those employees into the database table. Now what we will do to start with the practical part. Firstly, we will simply put the multiple files into this particular directory. In the projects, there is nothing for us to worry that how we can go for multiple, how we will place the multiple files into a 11 directory that will be automatically there. We just need to create a program which will process those files. But from the practical perspective, from the hands on perspective, we need multiple files. Then in that case, what you can do, you all know we have a transaction code 
CG3Z, which is already covered. CG3Z. But this transaction code is doing. This transaction code will simply upload the file from the presentation server to application server. So with the help of this transaction code, we'll simply upload the multiple files and we will do the practical. Anyone can do the practical of this particular topic. There is no hurdle. We'll simply use this transaction code to upload the multiple files into the directory and we will process those files one by one. So firstly, we will prepare suppose two to three files. We'll simply upload into this directory and then we will start with the program creation. Suppose I will simply prepare files. Suppose I will go for Excel. From Excel, I will copy it to Notepad. Suppose we are getting four column data. Suppose first one is employee ID. Suppose name will go for age or will go for city. Suppose this is the file. Suppose employee ID one, suppose name, suppose we will go for Sedu, suppose age 31, city, suppose Ahmedabad. I'll go for code, AHD. Suppose I will go for two, name Akanksha, suppose age, suppose 40, this is also Ahmedabad. Suppose I will go for employee ID three, name Shirali, suppose age 40, Ahmedabad. Suppose employee ID 4, suppose I will put my name, age 40, suppose Ahmedabad. Same way, I will prepare another data for Bangalore location, suppose. Location-wise, multiple files will be there. Suppose employee ID, I'll go for 5, 6, because employee ID cannot be duplicated, yes. So I'll go for unique. Suppose I will put Shrabani, suppose I will go for a name Shrabani, I will go for suppose Abhishek, suppose I will go for Parth, suppose I will go for Vikas, suppose city is Bangalore, suppose I will put BLR, because anyways I will go for three digit code, so I am just putting three digit code. Now I will go for BL. Now I will prepare multiple files. Suppose I will copy this data. I will prepare a notepad. Now the separator between the columns is tab hash because we simply copy pasted from the Excel. Suppose I'm saving on my desktop. Suppose I will simply save on my desktop. Okay. Suppose I will give the first file name. Now this is most important while saving the file, please follow a naming convention because it will play a vital role whenever we will read the multiple files. Suppose I'm giving the file name, suppose EMP. Suppose I will put AHD. Suppose whenever file will be there, then we will follow a proper naming convention. EMP underscore location code underscore date. System date, today's date. Suppose today is 16. And this is, we always follow in the projects also because we need to process the files on daily basis. So some proper naming convention will be there. So first file. Now I will prepare second file. Now I will go for second file. Now I will simply save. Now this file name, suppose I will put now EMP PLR underscore today's date. That's why I'm showing you step by step so that there will not be any mistake whenever we will do the practical. Now we have multiple files. I will simply upload in the system into AL11 directory. So that we can start with the practical part. You all know what is the transaction code CG3Z. 
we are using this transaction code so we can do the practical part we'll simply upload my file is on the desktop i'll simply choose all files this is emp ast this is today's state yes now this is very important please please go for a proper naming convention else we will face the difficulty whenever we start with the practical part we store into which directory slash tmp and suppose we'll always always save the file with this emp underscore three digit code of the location underscore system date because we need to process the file so we need to check the name also for that particular file i will go for Okay, I will allow. So first file uploaded. Now we will upload the second file. You can go for n number of files. It's totally your wish. All files. This is our Bangalore location. Now, please, please follow the proper naming convention. Suppose I will write emp blr underscore date i will go for suppose i will simply okay i'll just go for this upload i will go for hello now if i will show you this particular directory al11 directory we'll see slash dmp now if i will go for today's date Suppose this is our today's date. I will go for OK. Now you can see we are able to see two files. Yes, this is our first file. This is our second file. Now you can easily understand why I gave a proper name. See, into this particular directory, we can have other files also. If we will not follow the proper naming convention, then while writing the logic, how we can understand that we need to process this file or not. And it will play a vital role whenever we start with the logic part. If I will show you this particular file, four records, yes. If I will show you this particular file, we have this. So now, what is the summary of this particular video? into this particular video we started with a most common requirement of the project widely used requirement of the project and high probability that you will get a chance to work on this kind of requirement so many people ask yes in the previous videos you showed how to go for a single file but if we have multiple files how we can process those files and in real projects, yes, we are always getting multiple files. So we took a requirement that customer has different, different locations on every location, whatever the employees are joining on a daily basis, the file of the same will be in AL11 directory, name of the directory slash TMP. You need to process those files and save into the database table. So we need to, to start with the practical part. Yes, we need to firstly just go for multiple files also. So we have a transaction for CG3Z. With the help of that, we simply uploaded the multiple files. There, there is nothing for you to worry in the projects. There is no need for you to do CG3Z. We can do the hands-on. We can do the practical. That's why we are using this transaction code. Whenever you are uploading a file, please follow a naming convention because customer will also give you naming convention that whenever the file will be there, it is with this particular name. And it's a obviously understand into this particular directory, we can have other files also. But why we should process those files? We will only process the files which uh, are relevant to us. So at that time, these names will help us to identify that this is our file or not. Now, in the next video, 
we start with the program creation we will only only give the directory from the selection screen we will read those particular files then we will read that data into these particular files and we'll simply simply save into the employee statement so that's it and yes most important at the last we will do the archiving also and whenever we will do the coding, you will see a huge amount of code will be there when we will start with the practical part. So that's it in this video. Thank you.